reading two different things, if you guys are okay with that. I'm going to read a sh very short story, and then I'm going to read my favorite section from Updraft that I haven't gotten to read a lot because it contains massive spoilers, but um, I did, in fact, weed out all the spoilers a while ago for, for reading uh, for KGB, so I'm going to do that instead because uh, that would be different, right? And, and then I'm not tempted to read the other thing, which would be an excerpt from the book that I'm writing now, which would be very naughty. Yes, yeah, so nobody wants that. All right, I'm going to read like one more minute. Kelly, if you want to shut the door, let's yeah. Thank you. All right. Hi, guys. I am Fran Wild. I know so many of you, and it's awesome to see so many familiar faces out there in the audience. Um, this is my second world fantasy. How many of people, is this your first world fantasy? Yeah, are you guys having a great con? Yeah, this is pretty amazing. Um, I One of the things that I appreciate about World Fantasy is going to all the readings because they're really, really exceptional, extraordinary. And I haven't been able to get to as many readings as I wanted to this year, but my hope is that um, in the coming year I'll be able to get to more. So thank you all for coming. I am, um, hello. Do you want your name tag? I can, but I don't need it. Do you, you guys? Um, no, but thank you. I can keep it. You can just drop it right there. I'll get it. Thank you. I'll use it tomorrow. Okay, cool. All right. I am a short story writer as well as a novelist. Um, my short stories have appeared in Asimov's Uncanny Nature, Beneath Seas the Skies, and Tor.com. And my first book came out in September, which was almost exactly two months ago. And so now it is... Um, has been out for a long time, and <laughs> it, feels, it feels like it's been out forever, but I'm still really excited about it, and I'm excited about the next book, which is coming out next year. It's called Cloudbound, and if you have read Updraft, then you, that will give you a, a real indication of where we're going. <laughs> um, but I'm because I'm a short story writer, because I love short stories, I'm going to read to you the shortest short story that I wrote last year. It is 250 words long. It is a retelling of the story of Orpheus, Orpheus and Eurydice via GPS directions. <laughs> you are 2.3 meters from your destination. Commencing route for Orpheus of Thrace. Proceed from Siconian coast meadow south-southwest to mouth of Eurotas River in Laconia, approximately 800 kilometers. Travel time to waypoint, seven days at your current speed. Head 92 kilometers south to Cape Tanaris, also known as Matapan. Find Tanaris Gate. Recalculating, find Tanaris Gate, proceed to route. Pass into Tanaris Gate and proceed to River Styx. A toll is required. <laughs> exact change is required. Proceed to route. Descend 5,000 kilometers to throne room. Time to destination, unknown. <laughs> Arriving at throne room, proceed 5.2 meters to throne, avoid abyss. <laughs> Make your request. Receiving new information from satellites, calculating return trip. Exit throne room, follow northern path to Vale of Avernus, Cicero, Italy, approximately 6,000 kilometers. Proceed up incline, no turns are permitted on this route. <laughs> Proceed up incline. You are 500 meters from your destination. No turns are permitted on this route. You are 100 meters from your destination. You are 2.3 meters from your destination. Proceed up, recalculating. Recalculating, proceed to route. Proceed to, no crossing of the River Six is possible at this time. Proceed to route, or route if you're in England. Recalculating. Proceed ahead from River Styx, approximately 5,000 kilometers to the mouth of the Asheron River. Calculating new destination. Proceed 600 kilometers north, northeast through forest to Rodeview Mountains. Time to destination, five days to three years. Several drinking establishments ahead on left. <laughs> <laughs> new route selected. Thank you. Get it going, so <laughs> I stopped. But um, in answer to 
somebody's question online, I did Google map that, so all of the mileage is, I had it checked out with a, a class assist, all the mileage is accurate. <laughs> Okay, so the selection I'm going to read today is one that I've only read one other place, and I'm glad you're here, Alex, because you didn't get to that last reading, but um, I read this at KGB, and it is my favorite scene in the whole of Updraft. It is the scene that I wrote first, so of course it's in the middle of the book, which is where you can't read from because it, it gives everything away. So this is, um, Updraft began as a knife fight in a wind tunnel, a winged knife fight in a wind tunnel. And my main character, Kirit, um, found herself there fighting for the right to speak. And I wrote it as a short story that I was going to send to Vinicius Disguise. And um, I turned it into my, my betas. And, they, and I said, wow, I'm really glad I'm not writing a novel right now. Isn't this short story great? <laughs> <laughs> so you know what happened there. So this chapter is called Nader. I on the council tier, and all spoilers have been removed, so there's a really obvious name I'm dropping. <laughs> Not dropping, dropping, but you know, just kind of leaving out. Nader. High on the council tier, as the sun brightened the spire, singers dressed me in a white robe. They tightened my wing straps and whispered encouragements. They poured me chicory. I had been allowed several hours rest. It had not been nearly enough. Be fast, said an older grass-haired woman. Don't forget to look behind you, above and below too. I wish I'd had my father's lenses with their reflective mirror. I couldn't find them in the morning when I'd rushed back to my alcove and couldn't remember where I'd seen them last. When they finished preparing me, Wick bent low and whispered in my ear, be careful. I turned, eyebrows raised, he doubted me still? This challenge comes sudden. That is not tradition. You should have much more training and days to practice. Choose the weapon you know best and be careful. He stepped away. Only for a moment did I feel his hand on mine when he pulled it from me. The challenger has chosen the bow as their weapon, said a young woman at my side. Her brown eyes were hemmed with silver tattoos against her olive skin. She cleared her throat, pulling my focus to the workbench glittering with sharp edges. Glass knives with bone hilts, bone blades, spears, hooks. I pointed, making my decision. The young woman did not smile as she handed me my weapons of choice, knives. The worn bone hilts had comfortable grips wrapped in sticky raw spider silk. The blades were new, each a glass tooth so sharp it nearly hummed. Rummel watched from the edge of the council's balcony, wick beside him. Mock pulled on my sleeve, suddenly at my side. The wind beaters will help you. Look for strong gusts in the gyre. I looked down at him while the singer strapped the triple sheath to my arm. What did you give them? He looked worried. You need help, Kira. You're still learning. I had to give them your lenses. You haven't been using them much. My lenses? Mock. But the singer, securing my robes at the ankles, hushed me. The challenge should reflect in silence. It is tradition. She finished binding my robes, and I walked quickly to Rummel and Wick. I let my wings unfurl, shimmering in the daylight. My foot sling dragged behind me, making a skittering sound on the tier floor. Other singers gave me a wide berth. Rummel held out a hand toward me, then gestured to the gyre. Your birthright, Kirit, you've proven that. Rummel's words shredded the doubt Wick's worries had laid down. I could do this. Below, a white-robed challenger waited. I couldn't see them on the down tower balconies, but I knew that they must be close, if not already in the gyre. The challenger has demanded answers we cannot give. They have threatened to rouse the towers against the spire. Worse, Rummel paused and stared at me. They've broken laws in the past. You will stop them for the city's sake. Behind us, singers stood together, a wall of gray. You must not fail. Far below, the wind beaters readied their giant wings, their rot gas. The vents opened and the gyre gust swirled up until it reached me. I leapt into the maelstrom. Singers watched from the galleries as I swept around the gyre, seeking my prey. The challenger who had come so far and dared too much. The one who did not understand what singers were willing to sacrifice. I locked my wings in position and took the knife from its sheath on my arm. 
The wind kept pace with every move I made, lifting me as I circled. The galleries rustled with whispers as I glimpsed a flash of white from the corner of my eye, the challenger behind me. They must have clung to the wall below this council balcony until I leapt, then followed me out. Sneaky, just as they claimed the lawsbreaker would be, just like the lawsbreaker I had been. I could do a service for the singers, ending this danger to the city, prove myself, as soon as I got the challenger off my tail. An arrow arced wide past me, then clattered against the gyre wall. Their aim was off. The enclosed space and strange winds gave me an advantage. Still, I swallowed hard and tightened my grip. Hurry, Kirit. The wind beater's drums quickened, and I heard the wind whistle through the galleries. There was a drop coming. Another arrow seared far too close, the fletching scraping my ear. The bone point missed its mark, but I was wind bit already from the gyre's howl. The brush of the weapon stung my skin. By arching my back, I angled my wingtips and slowed my glide. The challenger hurtled over me into my wind shadow, and I angled away as the challenger dropped like garbage, spinning out of control. As they fought to find a stronger gust, I moved in above, looked for the best place to slash the challenger's wings, to end this quickly, to succeed and gain my birthright. I raised the knife. It glittered from the sun and spun as it split the air. The challenger had turned fast, shadow and wing, strong arm bent hard to the elbow hooks, fingers wrapped tight around a bow. We nearly collided. Dark curls, angry eyes. I swung away at the last minute, knowing the gyre would helped, me, helped keep me from dropping us both into the pits. But it was far too late. I'd seen his face knew the shape of it from just one glance. Black hair, those eyes, his earnest look turned gaunt and scarred. My friend lived. He had challenged the singers. He'd threatened the city. I searched for a gust to take me higher so I could think. Not him, not this. I found none. The wind beaters stirred the gusts to drive us together again. Wing against shadow, arrow against knife, untried singer against her challenger me to my best friend. My fight dissolved, crippled by relief at seeing him alive, but he, righted now and flying fast, knocked another arrow. Perhaps he hadn't realized who he fought. He wouldn't shoot, would he? I banked fast, trying to reach him, sheathed my knife. The galleries groaned in protest. My opponent's wings dipped and wobbled. He didn't know how to fly the gyre. He was tiring fast as well. But he held his bow horizontal, drew back the arrow. He looked up to aim as we circled. When his eyes met mine, his hand wavered. I saw his mouth start to form my name. Then he clamped his lips shut. His fingers tightened on the bow. Ducking my head and bending my knees slightly, I dropped fast. The arrow hummed past me, disappearing into the gyre's shadows. I took hold of the wing grips and twisted into a sharp turn. The wind beater saw my maneuver and stirred up gusts to add more force. I rocketed past him and circled again, locking my wings in fighting position. My fingers brushed the next knife hilt. How could I even consider it? This man was currently shooting at me, trying to kill me to win a challenge. The galleries erupted with stamping feet to match the wind beater's drums. What did I want? To be a singer, I had to defeat him. To be Kirit, I could not. I took a deep breath and swerved to avoid him, shouted as loud as I could over the roar of the gyre. What are you doing? He drew another arrow from his sleeve quiver. I thought you were dead. I could not stop myself. You might as well be, he answered, a singer. The way he said it warped across the wind. To me, the word sounded more like murderer. He found a fast moving gust and tried to rise above me. I ducked beneath him and cut off his wind. When he wobbled and started to fall, I dodged out of the way. One last chance. We flew side by side for a moment, my right wing grazing the gallery wall. You don't have to do this. I have so much to tell you. If I could get him to drop his weapon and concede the challenge, then perhaps everything would be all right. The singers would punish him, but he might live, though they would certainly punish me. I know enough. Your singers lie, Kirit. They killed my father for their lies. He started to pull away, then leaned toward me instead, trying to drive me into the galleries and crush me. 
Your father stole secrets. He broke laws. I angled my wingtip until I slipped beneath his white silk shuddering, bat battens shrieking. I held him there, then rolled hard, flipping his wing up in the process. He tottered, dropping the arrow. I flew away straight. Maybe some laws needed breaking, he shouted after me, writing himself. What secrets did my father die for? He pulled another arrow from his quiver. He only had a few left. The singers in the tears around us rose to their feet, angrily gesturing. On my next term, I saw Rummel far above, looking down, his face still as bone. The realization hit me. He planned this. He wanted to test me to see if I was a true singer. I wove and dipped so that my opponent could not aim. My throat ached from the exertion of talking while flying the gyre. The wind beaters accelerated their beats. Somewhere below, my father was among them. The gusts grew more fierce than I'd ever experienced in the gyre. The wind yanked at my hair, tearing it free. My friend's black curls formed a tangled nimbus around his head. They promised him answers if he won. What could I promise? A quick death without falling forever. Or I could lose. I could banish myself to the spire's depths by conceding. They would keep me alive, but I'd never see the sky again. If he won, they'd, ha they'd have to answer his questions, but he didn't know the right questions to ask. I did. If he conceded, perhaps I could ask more questions, change things. We flew opposing courses now, sweeping past each other in tighter spirals. He looked for advantage. I sought a way out. My initial relief at seeing him alive became anger. You do not know the truth. You have to give this up. No, the word was a sob. You can't win. Singers can't win. No, I am not a singer yet, but I cannot lose. He whirled around, furious again. I thought you were dead, but you're not. You're strong. I nearly starved these months with the laws they gave me. Where are yours? He was crazed, yelling. I saw the chips hanging heavy on his wrists. His arms were pale past the wing strips. His hands gripped the bow hard. He was trying. He was tiring. It's different. Too weak, but desperate. I didn't have much time. What could I do to shock him, to make him concede? I could tell him the truth. I could sing it. I cast my voice to carry on the drafts. I sang the rise to him, the real rise. If you want to hear that, that's in the audible.com book. I'm not singing it. <laughs> For a moment, the galleries fell silent. Then a shout of outrage broke through the wind beater's drums, the swirl of wind, Rummel's voice. Stop this. I continued to sing, hoped my opponent, my friend, would hear me, would listen. A voice on a nearby tear joined me, then another. My opponent's eyes grew wide as the words filled the gyre, and he heard the difference from what he'd always known as unassailable fact. This is why there are singers, protect tower from tower. I didn't stop singing until he shot at me again, wildly, his last arrow nicking my wing. Stop this, kill me already, he screamed. He threw the bow. It spun in the air, hit the wall, and plummeted to the gyre. I heard a cheer from the galleries. His straps bit white against his shoulders where his robes had slipped. His face flushed deep red. Buoyed by the song, I circled in long arcs, looking for a way to knock him into the nets above the pens to cut his wings open, to win without killing him. In the galleries, singers leaned forward to see better. The fight had gone too slow for the wind beaters. I smelled the rot gas before I saw the balls of flame, heard them rise last of all. With a whoosh, one hand-sized ball flew up the tower, then another. <clears throat> Monsters! A gout flew too close to his face and rose out the top of the spire. I smelled singed hair. I could push him right into a rot gas ball and his wings would burn, but my friend would fall, alive. I tried not to think about how Rummel would judge me for sparing him. I doubted it would be well. I twisted in the jumbled wind. I'm not trying to kill you. Shut up, Kirit. He drove for me, hands outstretched, trying to grapple my wings and drag us both down. We plummeted past gallery walls, carved with singers falling, wound round with flames. We were well down in the gyre now, too close to the novices and wind beaters, throwing flaming rock gas. I fought my way to an updraft, hoping he would follow, and that he was strong enough to follow me. He did, barely his pale wings filled with wind. I will tell you what I know, I said, but you must give up then. You must concede. Promise? He whistled. Our long ago flight signal agreement. 
I was about to break the spire's rules, but perhaps it would work. He would be left alive. I pointed down, spoke fast secrets. But I never got to finish. Two wind beakers began a new pattern. The gyre's wind spun me round and knocked me into my friend. My knife dragged across his wing. Over the roar of wind, the galleries screamed. And then the wind pulled us apart. I heard a gate open and braced myself for more wind. The wind beaters angled their wings anew and I was borne up on a massive gust. A separate gust sucked my opponent toward the open gate. I reached for him, tried to hook his wings, but my fingers could not scan the widening gap. He spun limp, his wings folding as he lost control and was flung into the wide open sky. But my wings filled. I was lifted by an opposing current. I'd won, or the wind beaters had. The challenger was defeated. The galleries began to sing, tradition, a second time through the rise, this time to welcome a new singer. Their song, which until that moment had been my song too, lifted higher and the wind swept me up. I was truly theirs now. I was a killer. I knew no greater pain. I was a singer, marked with the death of my challenger. I was spire, locked within its walls, no matter where I flew. nodding at the five minute guy. Oh. Um, repetition for me is because I was trained as a poet before I was trained as anything else. And so repetition for me is an exercise of um, showing change and showing differences through similarities. And so it, like when you when you repeat a chorus in a song, um, I don't know, how many, have, how, how many of you guys have heard the, um, the Bank Job by, um, I think it's Canadian Man. Wow. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> every time the refrain repeats, it, there's this amazing change to it. None of the words have changed. It's just the words around it have changed everything. So that was sort of what I what I try and do when I repeat or repeat things. But that's a great question. And are the twins going to make an appearance in that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> twins will be back. Yes? I love the city made of bone and just like the way it grows and how people inhabit it. And it, it struck me as something that would have been very dark in a lot of fiction, but it it wasn't in yours, and I was curious what inspired that setting. Um, it's it's a combination of things. There's a little bit of Milton in there. There's a lot of pandemonium from Milton in there, and, I, and there's also a, a discussion I got into with Stephen Bruce, who wrote To Rain in Hell. Um, one of the first short stories I wrote in this world, the main characters' names are John, D-J-O-N-N, -N, and Milton, because I'm a jerk. Um, <laughs> and I was sort of needling him. But the other reason is I wanted to write a story with a big mega structure, but I didn't want it to. I wanted it to be organic rather than religious. And so when you go to when you go to organic things, the first thing you can think of is flesh or, or you know animals or something. Bone is a really great thing to work with because it grows so differently on so many different animals. And I did a lot of research into that, and it was just it was amazing. And when I realized that one of the bone spires could be deformed and different than the others, making a fortress, then I had, and a wind tunnel, then I had a, a great thing to play with. <coughs> Probably one more. Okay. We have some more fudge up here, if you guys want fudge. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the reading. Thank you very much also for your support this past couple of months. It's been incredible seeing everybody out at readings. Um, it's been amazing seeing you online. This is the biggest gift you can give to a writer, is, to, is your presence.